Hi everyone, it's Tracy here from Art Fibre Stitch. I'm looking at a scrap of fabric that I found that I love. It's a sort of a tapestry kind of fabric. Can you see the bees and the flowers and the dragonflies, butterflies? Beautiful. I'm just going to use a scrap though, so I'm just looking to see what will fit into my picture. I'm wanting to tell a little story. I quite often do with a lot of my work, but I thought I'd take you on this little journey with me. So I'm going to choose a couple of pieces from this lovely little scrap and even them off a little bit. And then I'm going to fray the edge because um, I don't know how it's going to sit. I quite like a frayed edge. I'm going to do the same here with a little focal point. So I've got a little B on one and a little stripe with some sort of uh, flowers like stocks or something and a nice little dragonfly. So what do we put with it? I've got a little self-stripe kind of material here. It's a very ivory kind of pink and this one here is a damask kind of one, you know. So I like it. It gives us a neutral background but it also gives us some sort of interest. And I'm looking now at a sheer fabric. And this one, oh, and this one here, and this is a green. You can see there's green in that uh, that little print. But this sheer fabric, I, I'm just going to cut out a little slice of that. Can you see that lovely stitched kind of embossed leaf? I'm going to use that. So what do I mean telling a story with stitch? Well, I like to join them all up as if something's happening. You know, there's that dragonfly, there's those flowers, but um, the bee, let's try and make a little story out of it. So I have this, uh, you can see when I put that sheer down, how it made two different shades of that green, putting that little one on top there. Yeah, that helps as well. That's a very interesting kind of background. But I'm looking here and thinking there's a purple color here don't really need that because I've already got the blues and the pinks. Taking that off, fray the edge again and pop it back down again. It's all about composition with your background. You're trying to balance things. You know, I have my neutral areas and I have my highly patterned areas. I'm just going to pin it now because I like uh, where we're going with this. And now I'm going to drag out some cottons to start stitching. These are my heavier pearl cottons, and I'm just going to choose a few colors. I normally go for colors that are in there. I've got a green, eh, maybe that yellowy green. I've got a variegated one that's apricot on one side, or peach and, and turquoisey blue on the other. I've got some pink, like those flowers, maybe that lighter one. So I'll get started. I'm going to use this green one, and it's quite a heavy one. So I have to find a needle that's going to have a large enough eye. And uh, once I can get it threaded, I'm actually not going to um, put a knot on this one because it's quite a thick thread. I'm just going to leave a tail hanging because I can go back later and I can uh, um, anchor it with a, a smaller thread, stitch through it, make sure it stays. But this is what I'm doing to start with. I'm going to go down on that edge of that tapestry piece. And what's going to happen is it's going to hold those two background pieces, the sheer and uh, the green linen that I put in, you know, quite a bit in one little stitch. Now it is very thick and I'm having trouble pulling, but all you're going to do is give it a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and pull and it'll come. I'm just going to use the simplest of stitches, a running stitch all the way down. When I get to the end, I've still got thread on this uh, the length that I cut. And so I'm thinking, and this is where the story comes in, what can I do with it? So I have that shear that has these interesting uh, stylized kind of leaves in it. I'm going to start not, uh, not sewing down that rectangle of fabric, but I'm going to sew through it like this with some lines that will suggest... Um, flow you know that that piece will then flow into another piece and this is our story 
once I get to this point I've still got thread so I'm going to go back up again like I did you can see it there you can see how I followed the line or outside the line of those lovely leaves and stitches and how it's joined it all up so I went down there and then back up like that and um, you know I think this is really nice so now I'm thinking well I haven't attached that in yet that green fabric I need a way to do that I'm not really into straight lines I removed that little top piece that one with the B on it and I'm just using a couple of strands of a of our apricotty color may not see it too well but it's a good starting point and I'm going to tie a knot this time because it's not going to matter it's not going to make a big bump underneath and come up here and then I start off trying to do a straight stitch but it's kind of not in me I prefer to flow so a couple of meandering lines across is what I've done Mm, I don't think it's showing up terribly well, but that's okay. I very rarely ever take anything out. You can see there what I'm trying to do to hold it down, and that's that's fine. Let's see where it leads us. Yes, very pale, but it did hold it down, and that's all that it required to do. There we go. I still haven't done the bottom, though. Uh, I'm going through to the back here, and I'm doing a couple of stitches on top of each other, and trimming and that will hold that and look at this lovely variegated one it has those colors that are in it the blue and the peachy color oh, I quite like it it's thicker I've gone for a needle with a, a big enough eye like I say and I'm just going to do the same here and I'm going to do two wavy lines going across I like that it's variegated. I use variegated a lot. So I'm going to get to the end here and then I'm going to go back and whatever bits I didn't catch one time I'll catch another to hold that down. So now I've got a green stranded cotton. Just a couple of um, uh, threads from that six in the stranded. I just separate it out and I am going to stitch through I'm going to pick out this leaf that's there that we can only just barely see but doing this will make us see it more so it's almost like that that panel on the right well, when we've got it turned the right way it was like a garden wasn't it so that's what we're doing we're extending that garden out and at the same time we're holding everything down and we're picking out designs and we're letting the material speak to us and tell us uh, what what would be good so I'm just copying what I see there and going either inside or outside of that line so that I can still get the stitching and then so you can see here I've I've just ended it off and I'm having another look in my little frame hmm a good start but now I'm thinking I need the edge of that shear held down I'm not going to go fancy and as I don't know what I want yet, I'm just going to use a matching cotton. Two strands again of the stranded cotton, just a running stitch all the way down to hold that flat. And then I think pretty well we're, we're there. We're ready for just decorating. And I don't think it'll take much. But you can see this lovely flower. It doesn't quite stand up enough. I thought here's a good opportunity to do a French knot. And a little cluster here and there. And maybe poke it out over top of the edge of that tapestry fabric and into our blank space. That helps join it all up. And if you haven't seen me do one of these before, it's needle up. And then it's around your needle two or three times, whatever you like. And then, here we go, around the needle and back in again very close to where you came up virtually at the same spot but if you do the exact same spot it'll just pop through and you'll lose it so let's have a look at how well that worked can you see we've extended that flower out into our blank space we've still got leaves and things in the background just like we had on the tapestry piece and now just a last couple of finishing touches i think i would like to perk up that dragonfly so I've grabbed a really shiny, beautiful thread and I use it to just pick out some 
there he is on that wing. So from the body there, I'm just going to do some long stitches out. Just to bring that, uh, like the veins that are on that dragonfly. And, um, I'm just following what's there, remember. So it's already there. And a couple of a couple of stitches like that, and then going around the whole thing, the whole wing. We'll pick it out. There it is there, and that's a lovely view of it. Doesn't that look pretty? All right, but I did decide as well to go over and do the same treatment on the bee. Let's have a look at the bee. Yeah, I did some gold thread, and then I went around the outside in black. Uh, that helped make it stand out and see how it went outside the little square into the background that's what I mean it's like we have this story that we're telling this little bee that we put out on one side is now looking like oh I fancy going over there into that garden and um I like the way that it does tell this this little tale it does look very gardeny and it was a good fun project it didn't take a lot of time it didn't take a lot of um uh, stitches we only did the French knot and the running stitch so but look at how lovely it looks I think it's a winner I hope you do too so remember to look out for interesting bits of fabric it really doesn't take much you can extend it into that background and uh, maybe you'll find something that gives you incentive to make your own little story but I quite like it I think uh, that's nice. So, what do you think? Do let me know in your comments if you have liked it. And pick up a needle and thread and give it a go. It really is a very therapeutic exercise, especially if you don't have a pattern like this. You're just playing with it. Um, so, once again, I thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and to like the video. And um, see you next time. Thanks again.